There's not much that can be said about albedo and scaramouche that's already been glossed over in the multitude of videos regarding them being puppets and homunculi. So this video is gonna be more of a comparison between the two creations, since both of them are created through a certain means and not born into the world. And both of them have similar goals, which is to unravel the truths of Devat. Hey guys, what's up? Aru, and welcome to another theory video. This time about Albedo and Scaramouche's journey to breach the limits of Teybat. I'd assume you guys already know about Albedo and Scaramouche and their search for the different truths that were lost in time, but if not, I suggest you watch this video first and then watch this one as a follow-up regarding the two creations. We know that both Albedo and Scaramouche are after the same thing and that the only difference between them is their process and strategy for doing so. Albedo's ability to use Kimia and his purpose to fulfill the request of his master, Rindo Tear, and that is to find and show her the meaning of this world, which to Albedo's understanding is to find the truths behind his creation and the truth behind creation, quote unquote, itself. As his title says, Clyde Prince, Princeps Cretaceous, or Chalk Prince, his purpose is pretty much clear in that he must follow in the steps that the great sinner Gold walked in. There have also been theories about Rindo Tear being Gold and that he made Albedo to carry on her legacy. But a 500 year old alchemist unleashing dark monsters and then suddenly wanting to leave a legacy behind seems pretty weird to me. So my theory here is that Rindo Tear was also an alchemist similar to Gold in pursuit of researching technologies for Canria. But Gold was too lost in her studies and fell to madness, similar to what happened to the scholars of Sumeru in the current timeline, and ended up unleashing shadowy monsters capable of inflicting a so-called sin that corrupts the person. So Rindo Tear now has to do her job as one of the alchemists, even when the kingdom of Canria has already fallen, but for some reason was unable to, either through the loss of her kingdom, or old age, or maybe some ailment or illness that she encountered in the cataclysm long ago. Similar to the monsters that Gold made and their power to infect and corrupt the beings that they make contact with. Keep in mind that the sin could spread in various degrees depending on the knowledge of the infected individual. So for Rindo Tear, she now has to act quickly and find a way to continue her research even though she won't exist or fall into madness, similar to Gold. She then creates Albedo to carry on her research for her. We know from Dane's Leaf that Albedo might end up in the same situation, and that he could unleash a catastrophe similar to what happened to Conria and Gold. No one can dispute Albedo's talent, but the source of the knowledge he possesses. It once brought about the destruction of a glorious nation. All that most people know of him is his title, Crida Prince, and that he gained his position in the Knights on recommendation from Alice the Adventurer. Beyond this, the young man is a stranger to them, a complete mystery, and the essence of his knowledge is equally unknown. But I know it well. It hails from Kanria, the art of Chemia. Soil and chalk, the universe and earth, pure dust and the birth of human life. There is no mistaking it. I am content to watch most crises play out from the sidelines, but if Albeda were ever to make a single wrong move, I could not let myself ignore it. But one thing I want you guys to understand is that Albedo, unlike Gold, is aware of the destruction that he can unleash. And that Rindo Tear could have possibly told Albedo, in a sense, to pursue Gold, but not to become one. Rather, to be better than Gold. Albedo knows his goal and that he must find the meaning of the world. But he also knows that if he's not careful, he can easily end up like Gold and cause destruction to Teyvat. So with this perspective, he doesn't need to know who Gold is, only what has become of her. And Rindo Tear being the middle person for that makes it convenient enough for her to pass on her knowledge of Canria's technology and not too outlandish like assuming that she is actually Gold. And it would also answer why Albedo isn't as easy and quick to make rash decisions 
and start making experiments or doing crazy things. Unlike our next creation, whose power rivals that of descendants of gods. All we know from Scaramouche is that he's after the no seas of the Archons, similar to what Senora and Child have done in the previous regions. But to me, it looks like Scaramouche isn't actually taking the no seas for the glory of Sneznaya, but rather for his own motives. In the recent event, Labyrinth of Warriors, Child reveals to us that he is looking for the Balladeer and is apparently pursuing him. Which begs the question, is Scaramouche going AWOL? Now you're probably wondering why the Fatui sent a mere 11th Harbinger against the 6th Harbinger, which is a very good question. Child or Tartalia is actually an Abyss Power user and a very flexible combat specialist, a ruthless machine that's been honed for the sole purpose of fighting. In contrast, Scaramouche is in the description, a human who surpasses all others, and that the Fatui also removed his limiter for being a puppet of A, and Child has some bit of experience, quote unquote some, and the latent power to possibly fight and even beat Scaramouche. That and Child just wants to fight anything, so if the Fatui needs someone to go try and beat something up, he's your man. Not literally. If you want to know more about Child, you can watch this video here, but back to Scaramouche. Now Scaramouche's intentions aren't really the same as Albedo's per se. He is also after the truths of Tevat but seems to be hiding a more personal goal. And finding the truths are a way to get to that. Scaramouche in his search for truths was able to manufacture, sell, and use many deadly weapons. He's responsible for the spread of delusions in Watatsumi Island and for some reason used a gas weapon that became more potent the more angry you are. He also knows about the stars and how the world seems to be like, so he's slowly gaining over Albedo when it comes down to the more truths he finds. Scaramouche also has Dottore and Pulcinella to possibly back him up in his search. Dottore is capable of making enhanced humans that can rival even gods. And being one of the scholars of Sumeru, he has quite the pool of knowledge and wisdom to make that happen. Pulcinella, on the other hand, is the first harbinger, capable of commanding forces to work under Scaramouche and help him search for truths, which is basically what the Saritza wants. So what Scaramouche lacks in knowledge and ability, he makes up for with connections and networks as well as sheer force. And let's not mention his own ability as a puppet of A. For all we know, he can also wield Muso Hitachi, albeit a slightly less powerful form. Scaramouche also doesn't need to pursue research and put so much time and effort as much as Albedo does. He simply needs to obtain lost artifacts and knowledge and then relay it to his associates. I won't say comrades or companions because each harbinger is more or less at each other's throats, with the mere fact that they are under the same banner keeping them from beating each other up. My theory on Scaramouche is that he's pursuing truths for the Saritza as a harbinger. Keyword as a harbinger, but this isn't his real goal. He wants something else. Possibly to become an Archon or even surpass Archons and head straight for Celestia. And even beyond Celestia, he wants to be the gods that govern outside of it. He already has the abilities of an Archon and he can live for quite a long time. And the truths he's pursuing isn't for the purpose of becoming gold, but rather to surpass gold and possibly becoming something worse. Compared to Albedo, Scaramouche wants power and dominion, be it a weapon, a place, a state of being, or even godhood. And that probably wouldn't even be enough to satiate his egoistic nature. For someone who was discarded even though he was made with such grace, a creation that is so perfect that it surpasses humans and even the judgment of gods, yet is left out to wander and one day rot and ruin. His hunger for redemption and his lack of purpose is what drives him to such heights. He has nothing to lose and has everything to gain from doing whatever he wants. And the highest he can go is of course Celestia and whatever lies beyond it. Hence why he is after the truths of Tevat and why he decided to become a harbinger. Both Scaramouche and Albedo are now in parallel to each other with a different goal. But the key difference now isn't the technological race. It's now the purpose and motivation behind it that both of them have. Scaramouche wants dominion and to surpass Celestia. And on the other hand, Albedo wants enlightenment and find the meaning in all things. Just as his master told him. 
and from the looks of it, both Scaramouche and Albedo are making considerable leaps in their inlined yet unentwined fates. As for them meeting up at some point in time, in game, and for what comes next, I'll leave it up to you to wonder about because this will be the end of my discussion. There you have it, my theory regarding Albedo and Scaramouche and their mad dash to search for what lies behind Teyvat. I just wanted to talk more about Albedo and Scaramouche because right now, they're the most enigmatic characters by far in the game. And theorizing or talking about alchemy and creation is pretty much a sweet spot for me when I make videos. Thank you to everyone who made it this far into my video. Be sure to like and comment down below if you feel like you have something to discuss or say about Scaramouche and Albedo. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and if you don't mind, click on the bell icon to stay up to date on my channel and the content that I post every few or so days. That's gonna be it for this theory. Be sure to catch my next video. I'll see you guys later and bye!